Hello adventurers. Sorry if I look a bit sweaty. I just went for a run and it's really hot out there. Which uh, kind of got me in the mood to talk about a very important topic. Stamina. So, stamina. Does stamina work like how it works in video games? You know how you got the stamina bar down the bottom corner, and whenever you sprint or attack or jump or any other kind of explosive action, it ticks down a little bit. And then if you stand still or just walk for a little while, it starts ticking back up. Does it work that way? Hmm. Well, no, not really. Well, thankfully, we're not in a video game, because that stamina bar, typically when that runs out, you're a sitting duck until it can replenish couldn't be further from reality because in reality we got three forms of energy that are fueling our stamina and I'm going to explain each of those to you in this episode and if you're serious about performance it is very very important that you understand these three energy systems so that you can take advantage of them and apply them in the most appropriate and optimal way possible now these energy systems I am nicknaming FOSS, Glyco and Aero for you alchemists out there these represent Phosphocreatine system, the glycolic system, and the aerobic system. Another one for you alchemists. Stamina is mostly made up of adenosine triphosphate, which comes from our, midichlorian, um, our mitochondria, which are these really, really awesome little critters that live inside our cells. But for everyone else, let's just call that energy. Okay, let's move on to the first energy system. Foss. When you jump or sprint, lift a heavy weight, or you swing your axe out there at an opponent, you are using Foss. A huge amount of energy that is there for sudden explosive release. It is depleted in seconds, but it also replenishes in seconds. And it can take up to several minutes to fully replenish. Now we move on to Glyco. Glyco comes from the energy in your food. More specifically, the sugary, starchy, earthy foods. But it can also come from protein-rich foods as well, which we can go into depth about later on. Glyco kicks in when FOSS is running really, really low. If you're repeatedly lifting light to medium weights, or if you're running at an intense pace but not quite sprinting, your body's going to draw its energy from Glyco. It also kicks in when our aero energy is low and can't keep up with the physical activity that we're doing. It's very much a supportive energy system. Unfortunately, as glyco is depleted, it leaves behind acids. For the alchemists, this acid is mostly lactic acid or lactate. Have you ever heard the term feeling the burn or have you experienced it yourself? That's the acid building up in your muscles. And your body needs to push that acid out of the way in order for the muscles to continue functioning normally. Now that process requires time and more importantly air. You need to breathe. But to restore your glyco energy takes hours. It can be two to five hours to get half back and up to a full day to get it all the way back up to 100%. Okay, let's move on to aero. Aero, that's your sustaining stamina. When you're walking long distances, or if you're really fit, jogging long distances, your body is drawing on aero energy to sustain that activity. Aero can draw its energy from glyco or from the energy in fats, the fats stored in your body or the fats in your diet. In fact, that is precisely the reason why your body stores fat. So the aero system always has something to run on so that even when you have nothing to eat, there is always some energy there that your body can draw from. Of course it is a bit more complicated than that, and maybe I can elaborate on aero further in another video. But for now, let's see how we can optimize these three energy systems to get the best performance out there on the field. For you skirmishers and scouts, you should really optimize your aero stamina by developing your cardiovascular health through training running or jogging through a long sustained durations on a regular basis. Duh and or hello! The idea is to be so efficient at navigating around the battlefield that you don't need to rely on your glyco stamina. Instead, 
Whenever you need to sprint or to fight, you've always got your FOSS energy there that you can rely on for a good 10 to 12 second sprint or brawl, and then you can get out of there. And so the only time you need to rely on your Glyco energy is if you've made a bad call and you've backed yourself into a corner, or if someone's giving chase, and you've always got that energy there to get yourself out of a pickle, or hold the line if you need to. As for your soldiers out there on the shield wall, or anyone else expected to hold the front lines by standing in a battle ready stance, holding up a shield, swinging a spear or a pike around, anything like that, it is much better for you to improve your glyco stamina. And you can do that by increasing your muscle mass. It's easy to imagine that a bigger muscle can hold more glyco energy and it can flush the acids out faster when it's at rest. But don't let that be an excuse to not train your cardiovascular health because your aero stamina is still going to improve things overall. Okay, so that's a very basic overview of the three energy systems. Yes, there's more going on than I've described. And my perspective is a bit unique. But hopefully that's given you a greater understanding that will allow you to optimize your performance out there on the battlefield. If you're still not sure about what's going on, throw a comment down. I'll do my best to elaborate and clear up any confusion. I am going to dive deeper into the topic of each of these energy systems in later videos, but that's going to be more in the context of specific exercises and training goals. If you have a specific training goal you'd like me to cover, put it down in the comments. I'll make it a priority. Thanks for watching. Remember to keep on training. I'll see you in the next video.